Hello, and today I will be deriving the Euler equation. So, if you remember in my last video, we looked at the continuity equation, which is one of the big equations for fluid mechanics. And today I will be looking at the Euler equation, which is really just a formulation of Newton's second law with a bit of fancy mathematics in it. So, if we take a surface, if we take a fluid, okay, so we will take a fluid and we're just going to take a, a tangent plane of this fluid. So it's just essentially a, a strip of the fluid in a two dimension, okay? So here's the strip of the fluid, so we cut the fluid across. In the middle, we're going to say this middle part of the fluid here, we're going to call this the fluid element. So this thing here is we're going to call it delta s and it's really just a fluid element so it's a really really small um, piece of the fluid really so think of this as water or something just a fluid and coming out of here we have a normal vector which points 90 degrees away from the surface okay and in this derivation we will take the fluid as being we will call it in inviscid, which is a fancy word for meaning uh, no viscosity essentially. Essentially, okay. And what that means is that means that there's no rubbing um, between other um, fluids above. There's no forces that have been like a shear forces. So there's no forces pushing it this way. So essentially, you only have one resultant force coming off this, and that's the force which goes down from the fluid above it. So so pretend you've got another fluid coming in here. You've got no forces that are rubbing against it. No frictional forces. You've only got a resultant force which is tangential to the fluid. Okay. And we're going to define the stress of the fluid as the force per unit area okay this is the force per unit area and to be fancy about it we're going to say this is the limit as our surface our area our delta s here goes zero of delta f so our, our force that we have Per this per this uh, unit area, I'm going to take the limit as that unit area gets really small and approaches zero. And I'm going to say this is equal to uh, this vector quantity little f, which is the which we're going to denote as negative p times the unit vector. We'll be we'll be consistent with our notation, so we'll just put an arrow on top. Which means what this means is. So the force here, the tangential force, or, or, or the stress, the force per unit area, it's acting um, downwards from the um, fluid above it. So it's acting downwards, and the direction is minus n hat. So it's acting down here, so it's pushing down, and it has a magnitude of negative p, p being the pressure. Okay. So now we've done that, we shall say that if we take our pressure, okay, we take our pressure, and if we perform an integral, okay, over the whole surface here, we perform an integral of the whole surface, but we perform a surface integral over the whole surface, we're going to add all of this up, and we shall call this the force actually let's not call us anything just that we'll just put so you perform the integral so you take this tangential component and you add it up over the whole surface okay next if we use gauss's theorem or the divergence theorem theorem oh can't spell what this lets us do is this lets us convert this surface integral to a volume integral. But this is a special case of uh, Gauss's theorem. I'm not going to use a vector because we know Nabla is a vector um, acting on P. So this is the gradient 
over the volume integral now, okay? So usually if, you, if this was a vector quantity, then you'd have a divergence, but because it's a scalar quantity, we're not, it's just the gradient, okay? So this goes from a surface integral to a volume integral here, okay? Now that's really handy, because that means we can define this as the force um, per unit volume, okay? This is the force per unit volume. And if you think about this, it's the force per unit volume. Well, we're integrating this over the whole volume. So if this is the force per unit volume, then this thing here, uh, nabla um, p, or negative nabla p, technically, because this scales in, is technically the, this thing, is the force... Sorry, this is the force. Um, oh, sorry, this is the force on the volume. My my fault here, because this is the force per unit volume. Okay, so if this is the force on the volume, because we're integrating over the volume, then if you scale this down, this would be the force per unit volume, and you integrate over the whole volume, you get the force on the volume. Okay, so this is the force per unit volume. Okay, and from Newton's second law, we can say that the resultant force is equal to the mass times the rate of change of the velocity. Okay, we use the velocity, and so if you with a little bit of thinking here, we also know that density rho is equal to the mass divided by the volume. So if we think, okay, well, we'll we'll take this force per, force per unit volume and just as a side note here this is the force so the force per unit volume would be f divided by m okay so if we take this here so we take in we're taking negative grad p that's the force per unit volume if we divide by rho that's the same as grad p divided by the mass divided by the volume right which is the same as minus grad p times the volume divided by the mass. But this is the force per unit volume. So this is the force per unit volume times the volume. So this is the force divided by the mass. So this is the force per unit mass. But the force per unit mass we've got over here which is dq by dt. So this allows us to write negative grad p divided by rho equal to dq by dt, right? But we know what dq by dt is. Okay, so now what we can say is that, okay, we've got that for now. What we can say is that if we take um, the, if you just think about this for a second, we won't be able to use dq by dt, okay? Because even though this is the acceleration, remember when we have to take the acceleration of a fluid, from the last video on the continuity equation, we have to use the material derivative, okay? Because we have this extra chunk of, remember if we had, would be dq by dt, the partial dq by dt. So using this idea here, we're gonna replace this with dq by dt, the material derivative, okay? And just for namesake, we're gonna add in an external force here, okay, because this is the resultant force, uh, sigma f, but we're going to add an external force here, which is the force from all the surroundings, okay, and so that's equal to the acceleration, which is the material derivative, but we know what the material derivative is, we know that's partial dq by dt plus q dot nabla times q. That's the definition of the total derivative 
um, acting on Q, the material derivative, okay? So, we know that F minus grad P divided by rho is equal to partial dQ by dt plus Q dot nabla multiplied by Q. And this is the Euler equation here. This is the Euler equation. However, we say we are given f. We know what f is. How many variables do we have here? Well, we've got the pressure, which we don't really know. Uh, we've got the density, which we don't know. That could depend on the position and time. We've got the velocity of the fluid, which we don't know. So that's one, two, three. But this here, the velocity of the fluid, acts on um, all of the coordinates, the x, the y, and the z uh, direction if you work in Cartesian. So essentially, we've got 1, 2, but now this acts on x, y, and z if you work in Cartesian, which is an extra three different directions. But because this is a vector equation, we have three plus, uh, sorry, 2 plus 3, which is 5 variables five variables in here okay and so what we need is we have five variables but we need a boundary condition okay and what is that's a condition which will allow us to solve this equation and the condition we usually take to be our boundary condition is we will take q dot n to be zero, which means that if we have a tube or a pipe and we've got the fluid which flows down the tube, there's no um, velocity velocity component of the fluid in the direction of the normal. Okay, so essentially it's all flowing in this direction and none of the fluid is flowing um, or hitting the sides of the pipe, okay, in the normal directions. And we can have two normal directions, but yeah. So that's what the Euler equation is.